all counts. Let's talk to Cormac Smith, former advisor to the Ukrainian Foreign Ministry, of course. Cormac, very good morning to you. Morning, Mike. It is all your fault. How are you? <laughs> I'm all right. Uh, luckily, as uh, as Keir Starmer would suggest, I'm the one with the broadest shoulders, so I should take the blame, right? Um, now, you've got a very interesting thing to talk to me about today, um, and it's about the, the commemoration, I suppose we should say, of October the 7th that happened on Monday. Um, when October the 7th happened last year, 2023, I was so appalled by what happened and what I saw and I, I've seen, as I'm sure you have, some of the footage that, that not everyone has seen. And it's the most disgusting, you know, terrorist attack I think I've ever, ever set my eyes on. But you've got a different take on it um, to most people. Tell us what it is. You know, on the 8th of October, I thought to myself that Russia's fingerprints were all over this. And I saw one or two articles speculating about this, but then on the 10th, of October, Vladimir Zelensky came out based on information from his security services, mm. the SBU, and said that Russia were definitely involved in supporting Hamas and helping them plan and pointing to evidence of the GRU and also the Wagner group. Right. Now, I, I subsequently, I have tried, I think you know me, Mike, I'm a bit like a dog with a bone, but I've been trying for over a year to get this discussed on the media mm. and I am perplexed that nobody will do it. Right. Um, I've spoken to a number of contacts in both senior military and in the security services who have assured me that I am right, that it is. And I spoke to, before I came on this program, I spoke to one particular, one of my better sources, who said that, you know, he was involved in the tracking of the GRU um, up before this, and there was a number of meetings between GRU and senior Iranian officials um, 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 spotted in Cyprus. So we know that Iran and Russia have an absolute... Um, 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 partnership mm. in all this but then you know i tried a few times but then earlier on this year i noted nikki haley no less than the former u.s ambassador to the u.n and a former presidential um, candidate on a visit to israel came out and said very very clearly that this was backed by iran china and russia and she in particular pointed the finger at Russia helping to plan with the um, with the intelligence and the planning. Anybody I have spoken to who really knows their stuff has said that the complexity and the, um, and, and the size of this operation mm. was simply beyond Hamas to do on their own. The other thing, you know, you talked about the sickening atrocities. And Mike, yes, I have seen. I've seen far too much footage. And like some of the atrocities in Ukraine, I unfortunately mm. now have memories and images that I can never get out of my mind. And again, that brought me back to the link between mm. Russia and Wagner in particular, who have a track record for this sort of horrendous filth that they have carried out in Ukraine and that they have carried out mm. in Russia. So, you know, there's a couple of really big people coming out. Vladimir Zelensky, you know, he doesn't have a he doesn't have a record of lying to us. And why would he say this? Yeah. Only four days, three days after the attack, I, I just noted it this morning, the 10th of October. Right. Why would he say this? But, you know, Nikki Haley, I think, is a pretty big voice as well. Yes. That well, we've allied... Got, we've got Nikki sorry, Haley... Mike. I'm sorry, I was just going to play a clip for you because I've got Nikki Haley speaking uh, from 2023 about exactly this. Have a look. October 7th is Putin's birthday. Who's the happiest person in the world right now? Putin. Why? Because the U.S. and the West took all their eyes off of Ukraine and what we do? Started looking at Israel. Did Putin call Netanyahu? Nope, not for 10 days. You know who he did call? Hamas. They came the next day and they held hands and said they were friends. We now know the Russian intelligence is what helped Hamas know how to get through that barrier. See the connection. Interesting stuff. And we do know as well, do we not, that I don't know if it ever happened, but I remember seeing a news story that said there was going to be some kind of summit in Russia, which would include not Israel, but would include Iran and would include Hamas. And they were all supposedly going to meet up in Moscow. Well, I know there were a number of meetings and I don't have the exact details in front of me, but I remember pictures of 
Hamas officials photographed, I believe it was in Russia's uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, not long after. But you know, we do know that um, we do know that Putin is due to meet the, the new president of Iran mm. um, later this week on Friday yeah. in a meeting somewhere in the former um, Russian Federation. It's obviously restricted um, where Putin can travel at the moment. But you know, the I mean, what the the piece I found recently from Nikki Haley was almost a year year on from that one yeah. and it was taken it was on a visit to Israel and visiting a memorial for the victims of that horrible mm. day where she made the exact same points very clearly so clearly this is something Nikki Haley didn't just say once right. she's not going away on this if I could say one more thing Mike mm. you know what people there was it was Putin's birthday as Nikki said nobody the one thing we can be clear about the biggest winner of October the 7th, 2023, was Putin. Because as Nikki Haley said, it took all of the media's focus and the world's focus off what was going on in Russia yeah. and onto the Middle East. Now, I have a little bit of um I have a little bit of evidence there because as you know, I've been talking about this since over six weeks before the full-scale invasion. Mm. I've got about 250 interviews under my belt, um, advocating for my Ukrainian friends, which you know is what I do. My interviews fell off a cliff after the 7th of October and they have never recovered. Yeah. And I've been doing it long enough to know it's not personal. It's just a good indicator of the media's shift in perspective. That has played into Putin's hands and it's played into his hands in Ukraine. Yes, I think you're absolutely right. Um, Cormac, it's a fascinating um, investigation that you've been doing and I think we should all keep following it up as well because we know as well that you know Iran has supplied drones to Russia. We know that some of the stuff that Russia's been firing into, um, uh, into the, uh, uh, the Ukraine 